Yes, hi all. Well, I'm very excited about today's video. Uh, we do have a special guest, uh, Kim, and uh, she's actually a professional organizer, someone that I have worked with personally. She really knows her stuff about maximizing space. She has over 38 years of experience in the mental health industry mm -hmm. and really has a wealth of knowledge to share with us. Uh, so I'd like to welcome Kim and be sure to check out her website, spaceforyou.ca. Welcome, Kim. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. <laughs> oh, for sure. Uh, I definitely look yeah. forward to this. And uh, just before we go ahead and get started in our conversation, uh, we just have uh, just a statement regarding legalities, just that whatever we discuss uh, in today's video, uh, is only for educational and entertainment purposes. So do consult with a medical professional based on any knowledge that we share. All right, so now that we got the hard stuff out of the way. Yes. Uh, cluttering, decluttering is something that I, I'm really, uh, I'm passionate about. I do see the value on it. And um, I felt it would be just important to do a little bit of a background research to see what the need is for this particular conversation. So I found an article through uh, NBC News and it actually cites that uh, one in four Americans struggle with a clutter problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. also the average home has 300,000 items. And this article was before COVID. So you compound COVID, you compound inflation, which we're all experiencing, it's probably even more. Mm -hmm. So um, I think uh, this conversation is very timely and, and really the whole hope is that it helps people out there. Mm -hmm. uh, so now just in terms of our first question that we have uh, for Kim is um, what is the cluttering and how is it important for our mental health? Okay, great. Thank you so much, Jeff. So decluttering is not a one-time thing. You know, sometimes people think that they think that someone can just come in, clean up their space, and it's going to be like that. It's really an ongoing process. And when you think about um, people who might be, you know, kind of living in chaos, they um, can't find their keys when they're leaving in the morning, they're tripping over the cat, um, they're looking for paper that they might need for school or something, and they just... Uh, they're already stressed out you know they're already anxious for their day yes. and the thing is you know having having a cl cluttered home can really have an effect on your mental health and how you feel about yourself I remember working with a woman um, when I was running a, a group which I ran for many years in person which was fun <laughs> and um, I remember her say her talking about you know her her own feelings and her self-esteem Yes. And she said that it was a direct relationship with her home and how her home looked. Wow. And it really does ha have an effect on that. So there are, there are so many benefits to decluttering too. You know, like we can reduce the stress and anxiety that we feel. We um, sleep better. We are able to have a clear mind, right? Yes. And um, we're able to focus on what is important as yes. well as you know, oh, yeah. and, and focusing on our goals and what we really want for ourselves instead of, instead of just kind of, you know, putting out fires all the time. And, yeah. and I see that with people, especially people who have more of the chronic disorganization, yes. right? Like more, more serious issues. Yeah. So yeah, like our, I, I really believe that our homes <clears throat> need to be like a refuge, you know, for at, at the end, we go out into the world, we do our thing. And we come home and we need our homes to be a place where it's safe and comfortable and a place where we can relax and yep. rejuvenate ourselves so that we are refreshed for the next day when we, we go out again. So we don't want to come home. We can't get in the door. We, we, we can't make dinner. Yes. You know, I mean, I'm talking extremes here, yes. but it does happen. And, and sometimes people are quiet about that too, sure. because it can be embarrassing. Yes. to be in that situation but um, when you think about that and the correlation to our mental health like wow right that's that's really huge and and I just um 
I, I appreciate everything you share with that because I can relate to even my desk, whether at home or when I'm at work. And when my desk is actually tidy and I feel like I'm more productive, I can get more done in short time versus so things are there's papers all over and and it just leads to um, a disorganized mind and uh, yeah. there's so many benefits I think the cluttering is really like a natural like mood booster like if your space is clear you're, you're going to as you've indicated think better think clearer and um, there's just something about uh, even on my journey about uh, keeping uh, space organized, like as I've been able to free and donate things or sell things, somehow, some way, there is like you're able to attract new into into my life as well. So I think that's also the powerful benefit of uh, ridding yourself of maybe whether it's clothing that no longer represents our style or uh, you don't like how it looks, like being free to let it go so that you can attract new into your life as well too. So. Absolutely. And I think that that's, those are really good points. And I think that we're always changing, we're evolving and yes. we, we change our styles. We change yes. um, what we might be interested in. Like when you, when it comes to hobbies, that can be a really big thing with um, the people I work with that they have a lot of craft supplies. And I, I get why it's hard to let go of them too, because it's like little things could be used for something <laughs> down the yes. road. But it's also about, sometimes it's about, it can be about grieving too. Like sometimes we have to let go of projects that we might've started and we didn't finish them and mm -hmm. are we really going to. Yeah. So ask yourself that really hard question. Yeah. Are you really going to work on this project or is it going to stay in the cupboard forever? Right? Like maybe someone else will finish it for you. That's true. That's right? True. Like, so things like that. So it can be, so we are changing. Yes. Yeah. Time. And it, so it's good to always be reassessing that. Yes. Like, yes. Like what your feelings are about it. Yes. Yes. Very true. Very true. It's uh, decluttering is an ongoing journey and that constant re uh, reassessing uh, whether this is a part of my life or not. So, uh, so very true. Um, yeah. So definitely. Um, and that's number one. So, uh, so we're really in for a lot of um, knowledge today. Um, so definitely appreciate that. And uh, the second uh, component that we had is um, what would you say the relationship is between clutter and trauma? And I know trauma can be a very sensitive topic for, for many of us, but there, there could be a link. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a really great question. And um, it's actually a really popular topic on my blog, too. I find like I can kind of track, you know, what blogs are popular, what blog posts are popular. And those ones are really popular. People search that all the time. Um, in my experience, I really feel like a very high percentage of people who have had a traumatic experience or losses in their life are um, susceptible to chronic, some kind of chronic disorganization or even hoarding. However, I know not everyone, I'm not, not trying to paint a picture of that everyone who's had trauma is, is going to do that. It really depends on, you know, your re resiliency factors and family and supports that you have in your life. So, or getting support in the community, right? Yeah. So it can really depend on that. But, um, but as I said, in my experience with people who have chronic disorganization, it's usually I think it's almost 100% I hate to say it but I really do think it's oh. almost, I could be wrong it's my figure but I think it's really high that yeah. people have had and you know we all have our traumas anyway like you know whether they're big or small we all have losses we're yeah. all grieving some kind of loss you know um, and there's different ways that people might handle that and it could be that they when there's a loss let's say or the traumatic event they gather their stuff around them and they create a little nest for themselves and it's like their safe zone it feels like this is my safe place this is where i feel the most comfortable and now nobody can hurt me here yes and, and it can be a way of even keeping some relationships out of your yes. life yes um people can't visit perhaps Wow. So there is that maybe family can't visit, you know, it's like we have to have a fan if there's family and, and sometimes there isn't, but you know, the family can't come over for a dinner because whatever, and you might yes. make an excuse. 
but yeah, it's just a, it's a way of um, creating this net little nest around yourself so that you feel good. And um, other ways that we might soothe our uncomfortable emotions. There's lots of ways we do that. It could be through, you know, some kind of like addictions. It could be online shopping is really, it's probably a, a crazy thing out there for people. You know, it's very, it's probably very See that. Uh, addicting in a way too, because yes. you go online, you find things, it feels like a high yes. and then you order it. But then later you're looking at your bank account or you're looking at all these boxes that are coming in your house and you're like, yeah. oh my God, what am I going to do with all that? Exactly. <laughs> You know, so shopping, um, garage sales, uh, a woman in our group uh, this week made a joke because I, I, my question was, um, what, uh, oh, how do you reward yourself for doing, um, you know, a decluttering project? Yes. And she said, I, I'll go to some garage sales. And then she put, just kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, garage sales, um, yeah. you know, can be, it's that pull, right? You feel like going or, or going to the uh, thrift shop. Yes. It could be finding things like we, it's all kinds of stuff comes into our house without our permission too. Right. Yeah. So, so it could be finding things on the side of the road, things like that. So, um, and another way our stuff can distract us too from yeah. our emotions. So we might be, you know, there's a term that's called churning and it means, yeah. It means moving, just moving things around. It kind of feels like you're doing something. It feels like you're being productive because you're like, oh, wow, look at this thing I just found. I, I love this, you know? I think yes. I want to keep this and I'm so glad I found it. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to put it over here for now. So th stuff just keeps getting moved around. So it's a way that we that we can s soothe our emotions that are, that are hard. We're yeah. sad or we're you know, um, grieving, stressed, yeah. stressed, anxiety. Yeah. It can, yeah. it can soothe that anxiety. Yes. So, and, and I was going to even say along those lines, I think, uh, with such things as online shopping, I find the different platforms make it very easy, uh, mm -hmm. to, to purchase as yeah. easy as just, you know, uh, swiping across your phone and then the item is ordered your credit no card charged and, and, and that's it. So yeah, I, I think without that awareness that uh, it's very easy if uh, we have a, a tough day or we're dealing with different emotions, right? Yeah. shopping as a way. Then one thing, if you're shopping, but then if you're just constantly bringing in and not um, removing things, then exactly. that's a, a clutter problem. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And yeah, I, I um, have a bit of a weakness for books. And when I, when I see like somebody will re recommend a book or something, I usually check it out on Amazon Yes, and I'll check out the reviews too. Yeah. And you know, it's so tempting to, and, and I do, I buy books regularly. Like that is one of my weak weaknesses, I guess, but I mean, I try to read them too. Yes. <laughs> <I> buy them. <laughs> That's part of it too. Right. And sometimes I'll think, I'll think to myself, like we were out one day and there was a book, the bookmobile in London. I don't know if oh, you've seen it. It's no. really cool. Um, oh. Yeah. And there were some books like out on the outside of the bookmobile. And it was, it's, okay. a, it's probably like some guy's little business. It's so cool. Cool. I like books. And yeah. on the outside, and they were only $5. And I was like looking at them and I'm thinking, and I said to my partner, you know what? I, this looks interesting, but I got a lot of books I'm reading already. Okay. I can let it go. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I you definitely. Know? <laughs> I, I I definitely like that in a sense of um, being able to in that moment say yes. uh, no and yeah um, I think that triggered uh, two thoughts with uh, for me and uh, the first one is uh, they have here in in our city London the um, the little free library or free library yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, they're cool they they are cool and and for those that don't know about it is. Uh, um, different, um, uh, I guess, owners, or they have like a, a little, um, I guess, a little library in front of their home where uh, mm -hmm. you can drop off a book if you want, and then you can pick up a book, and yeah. it's just really good for the environment. I think it's worldwide. Yeah. Um, I, I probably should do that more than I should get on Amazon. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know. I, I, yeah, I, I, you, can, you can trade them up, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. good idea yeah yes yeah amazon you can uh, i mean with that you can trade it off and and just that other um 
thought I had as you're talking about the book and just being able to resist. And, and I, I remember um, uh, over the summer, uh, my, my partner and I, we went to Minneapolis and um, we, we were in Target and uh, they have really cool stuff in Target. And I remember picking up um, like an item to buy like some some clothing. And in that moment, I just said, you know what, I think I have, uh, I'm happy what I got and, and uh, I just put it down. So is this one of those things about going through that process of yeah. do I need it? Um, is this a good financial decision right now or, or what yeah. have you? So um, and yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I think it's a real skill and it can take, it can take some practice and it is a process. Like, um, it can, it can take a while to get to that point of being able to really think in that moment. There's lots of little tricks and tools that I've heard of, um, that I've helped people with as well when they have that, um, you know, that, that need to be buying something new and it, yes. it's always, and, and it can be like, if I get something new, that's going to solve my problem or that's yes. gonna, that even my decluttering problem. I'll buy some bins. <laughs> yes. That's so true. But, um, yes. Yeah. I really do think that's a skill to be able to say no, or even to say no to the garage sale. Like I don't need anything. Yes. Um, yeah. And it's, it, it sounds easy. Yes. It? The way yes. we're talking about it. Cause we have, a, we have acquired that skill, but Yes. It isn't easy for, for everyone. Like you say, like sometimes it's about soothing those emotions. You know, you had a bad day and you're driving by the mm -hmm. goodwill or, or value village or something. It's like, Oh, you know, I got a bit of time. Maybe I'll yes. just drop in there and see what they have. And yeah. then you're, you know, bringing more stuff home yes. without being conscious. And that's, that's what it, it is. It's about being conscious and aware yes. of what you're doing. And, and you might even want to be thinking, okay, so, I know I really probably shouldn't be doing this. So what am I feeling right now? What's yes. going on for me? You know, what is the underlying emotion? Yes. Um, am I feeling sad? Am I feeling lonely? Am I feeling angry? Yeah. All those things that we might be feeling. And that's why we want to go and soothe by shopping. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that yeah. is, that yeah. is uh, such a, a key is um, really doing some uh inner reflection to see how we're actually feeling in that moment because i think um a lot of purchases some of them could be from an essential standpoint something that we actually need but a lot of them come from that uh, place of uh, an emotional um drive in some way of how we're feeling or how our day went so i think just that piece right there is very important for for people just to uh slow down and really inspect how you're feeling and um sometimes even just uh there was something i, I heard that uh if you're about to make a purchase whether it's online or something just to maybe give yourself a uh, a day or two yeah. just you know to say okay you know what today's thursday i'll decide on saturday if i actually want to make sure. this purchase yeah. and by saturday you may you may forget about it so so um yeah. I have a little um, thing on my blog. Um, it was an older blog post, but it's about really thinking about those questions when you go to buy something and you you cut you print the paper and then you cut out the little thing and put it around your uh, debit card. And I remember my niece many years ago. She said she wrote. She was young and you know just starting out with a debit card and having a little not a lot of money, right? Yes. And she put a note on her debit card that said, "You have." no money, you know, or, or she put, you know, you have $35 in here, you know, just so yes. she would keep track of it. And I think that can be a really good way to do it too, because you don't want to come home and say, Oh, gee, how am I going to pay my rent? Or I have no money for food now, exactly. you know, or whatever it is. Right. So yes. it can be good just to keep uh, that awareness, however you want to do it, yes. but there's different ways that work for different people. That that is very key and uh, and uh, especially in the economic state that we are in right now wow. with, um, inflation yep. and and uh, high interest rates and everything so oh, I it's, know. yeah it's a very stressful time for a lot of people so mm -hmm. i think that key is is huge yeah. Um, yeah so um in terms of so we've actually reached our uh, third question, and uh, Kim has really been sharing uh, so many um, 
uh, like the hacks, but also the why, why we do different things. Uh, so we're actually going to be moving into the strategies. So, and, and even that last um, bit you mentioned, that's a strategy. Sure. But um, what would you say are three strategies uh, that we can use to spruce up, uh, to clutter our home, especially, it just seems like as we get into September, um, it's a new school season, but also people feel kind of fall, like, let's try to go strong leading up to the new year. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so I was thinking uh, about the three things. And um, the first one, I think, is just to, you know, when you think about working on a certain area, is just starting small. And because sometimes, you know, people, a lot of people I work with, they'll think, oh, I need to, I want to declutter this area, but they don't really get to it because inevitably life happens or things get in the way. And there's a reason for that too, because we really don't, might not want to do the decluttering. It's not fun for a lot of people, but um, you know, just to start small and start with a small, like a drawer or a, a corner of your closet and just plan for, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes and just do that. Just say, I'm going to go in there. It's on your to-do list. Maybe I'm going to go in there. I'm going to do that. And congratulate yourself, of course. And then, you know, once you've done that, you're able to maybe tackle even a bigger job, yes. right? Like you, you see the success quickly, especially with a small project. Um, you see what you've done and it, the, and the more you do those little ones, they add up to something big. That's, that's always how I, work on my clothing when I every year or not every year sorry every um season yes. I look at the clothing and see you know what did I wear um what do I love as I try stuff on too sometimes or I might even wear it and I might think you know this is a little it's a little getting a little worn it's a little pilly yes. or whatever and it goes right in the bin or right in the the charity bag or whatever they they can do what they want with my clothing <laughs> they usually ship yes. them away anyways probably or turn them into rags you know, fast fashion and all. Yes. <laughs> I don't really, I don't really uh, like, I like uh, to buy something that's more quality, but anyway, yeah. that's a whole other subject. So yeah, that's the first one. And I feel like, you know, if you do something small, then you, you see that success and the more you do it, the more you're going to see that. Yes. Right? So uh, my second one, we kind of touched on it already in a way, but um, is just like one in and one out. So if you are buying new clothing, again, let go of one or two items that you're not going to wear yes. um, because we know the more you bring in, if you're not letting anything out, go out, it's not yeah. going out the door. Eventually you're going to end up with a problem. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the less we have, we know this too, the less we have, it's easier to make decisions. Yes. You know, we, we wear 20% of our, our clothing. Yes. We have you know, 100%, but we wear 20%. So it's the 2080 yeah. rule, which um is how does that go um we wear 20 percent of i don't know but anyways i know it's 20 percent of our clothing is what we wear and you'll notice that if you do the spring or seasonal cleaning yes clearing, i mean clearing then you will notice that you don't wear you like i forgot about this i this item or yes you know there's a lot of clothing that we do we wear our favorites we and, just do it is interesting um as you talk about this um because it brought to my mind, I know earlier on a lot of these uh, tech giants like uh, uh, the uh, Facebook, uh, the, the creator of Facebook, um, uh, my, the name is escaping me right now, uh, Mark, Mark, but, uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg, yes. Yeah. And um, they used to comment on his style that he would often wear the same clothing the okay, yeah. and uh, the same color shirt. And a lot of people in tech, um, I believe even um, the creator of Apple, um, you'll see a lot of his speeches earlier on that is usually like a black turtleneck and uh, some stonewashed jeans. So right. I think there's something about that, about yeah, yeah. having a very simple wardrobe and it just helps to make decisions and just mm -hmm. that clarity. So yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, yeah. For sure. So, uh, and third one is just um, to be consistent, like to be always, always decluttering as you go through your, your home, um, to be always doing like the little tasks to keep yes. up to, to keep your place looking great. 
And the more, the more you can be consistent, the more you're going to, you know, feel organized, feel um, the clutter isn't building up as much. And it, it's just a feeling, it, it gives you that feeling that, you know, things are on the right path. Yes. Right? Yeah. And you're constantly kind of going through your things and letting go of what no longer serves you. So kind of even the first thing I said yes. about, about um, you know, really, really taking care of your place and, and, and working on just working on your, your home, like on an ongoing basis and yes. keeping it up to date as much as you can. And you will see that you will see the fruits of your labor and feel so much better and clearer and more productive and all of those things. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I, I was going to say along those lines, um, uh, I was going to say along those lines that uh, what you said at the beginning as well about um, start small. I think that's like just the principle of that can really apply to anything that we're dealing with, whether it's a new year and we want to uh, hit the gym, we don't start off going to the gym five <laughs> days a week. We know we're prone to fail that way, but if we start off very small, it could be a small walk or yes. something of that nature. And I think it's very um, connected to decluttering as well too. Yeah. Just be patient and uh, start small. And I like the part of congratulate yourself mm -hmm. when you, uh, you complete a task. Yeah. So it's I so think, true. I think that's huge. Yeah. And I do say, I agree with you. I think that it, it causes us to feel more successful too. When yeah. we start small, like, it, like you say, if you say to yourself, I'm going to go to the gym five days a week. And sometimes I do that with yoga and I, I, I know I'll, I'm, I'll get there. Like some mornings I'm just busier and I prefer mornings to do yoga. Yes. But, um, you know, say to yourself that you're going to go to the gym five days a week. You're setting yourself up for failure. Most yes. likely. Yes. But if you say, you know, I'm going to at least, I'm going to go twice this week or, yes. you know, even once doing it once is a great thing. You've, you've accomplished something. Yes. So it, it's those small steps. So thinking about a project, um, let's say it was a bedroom and you wanted to clear out your bedroom because there's lots of boxes in there. There's lots of things in there. The closet is full, whatever it is, you know, to do, to do um, like figure out the steps that you need to take. Yes. And, maybe it is 15 minutes a day maybe it's you know something to, a little bit different and I usually help people with that I help people to come up with a plan for how whatever their project is yes. depending on what it is like helping them to figure out what the steps are to to get to their goal yeah. and you know it doesn't always happen overnight and uh, I mean I I've heard and and from people and or read um you know sometimes people will say oh this weekend we're going to get to the garage we're going to clean up the garage <laughs> Well, you know what will happen? Something will happen to make that not happen. Yes. But that's too overwhelming to yes. think about. In too most ambitious. Cases. Yes. It is. So, yes. yeah, you're going to find like people want to come over and visit or, you know, you need to go to the grocery store. I don't know. <laughs> yes. Something but you are going to find something that is more fun or more just seems more important in that moment to do yeah. because who wants to go out there and like, especially if you open up that door and it's full. <laughs> It's overwhelming. Yeah, I'm it's closing awesome. that door now. <laughs> yes, me too. Me too. So those stuff, you know, those small steps are so important. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I, I definitely um, believe in that. Uh, there is so much um, uh, takeaways from that about just uh, starting small, and, and as you mentioned throughout our conversation, that uh, the cluttering is really it's an ongoing journey. It um, is. Yes. So I, I really believe just in, in conclusion to our talk, like Kim has really, uh, she has shared so much in terms of uh, starting off with uh, defining what is the cluttering, uh, how it's connected to mental health, including trauma. And we wrapped up with looking at different strategies on how we can uh, tackle this. So I think a lot of uh, takeaways and we would just really encourage this uh, as you, watch this video to, of course, uh, to share it and uh, also to follow Kim on her different socials. So it is uh, Kim Space For You on Instagram. Uh, her website is uh, spaceforyou.ca uh, where you can um, 
check out her blog and uh, the different services that she actually offers. And uh, for me, I'm Motivated Motivation on all platforms, YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. And uh, we would just really encourage you to leave some comments on what you do to declutter as well. And uh, just really appreciate you, Kim, again, uh, for sharing your expertise with the, uh, the viewers. Okay. Thank you so much for having me, Jeff. Yes, yes. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. It is. It is. Always. Always a great conversation. <laughs> I know. <laughs>